mentioned in the book not, because yeah, no, um, no. just as people were beginning to write the old country off, and as even Churchill was admitting defeat, which is what he did at his famous appearance at Fulton in 1946. His last major speech. His last major speech, in <laughs> fact, was he said, you know, we're, we're through, we've borne the heat and burn of the day, the torch has to be passed, but fortunately we have our American cousin. And the British spirit, as it were, must enter this new and young and vigorous body, and that will give us um, a further say and a further lease on life. And the first stage in doing that really, of course, was what um, someone well known to you, James Burnham, called the receivership mm -hmm. into which the United States took the British Empire. If you look at where American foreign policy is now concentrated, from Pakistan to Palestine and so on, it's an inheritance from the British Empire. And the other is obviously cultural. Um, one of my favorite examples is to say to people, well, is George Wallace a wasp? And people say, not really, no, he seems rather a vulgar chap and so on. But, but I say, but he's very white extremely Anglo-Saxon, very Protestant were the things about George Wallace. You say, is William Buckley a wasp? And they say, absolutely, he's what's meant by wasp. And I say, well, white enough, but in fact Irish and Catholic in provenance. So wasp is a term of class as well as of um, ethnicity in America, and that's impossible to understand unless you understand the special way in which America is appealed to by the British imagination. Uh, you, uh, cynically or non-cynically? I would say genuinely. Both. I would say genuinely that there is, there is a real affection that's mm -hmm. based on a common sacrifice in war, on blood, on language, on literature and so on. And there are certain kinds of emulation which I attack in the book. I think a rather pathetic sort of showbiz attitude to the British royal family, for example. Mm -hmm. And in politics, too easy a resort to things like Kipling and Churchill and the windier aspects of British imperial bluster when some piece of American foolishness needs to be defended overseas. It's too easy to reach for this sort of stock of metaphors. O'Sullivan and his newspapers that do it all the time, they say, this is Munich, you know, uh, if we don't take our stand here, America will be dragged in the mire. They appeal to the Churchillian, the John Bull spirit. So we vanquish the Falk Falkland Islands. Well, exactly, and the Malvinas go down and so mm -hmm. forth. And that this is, but this is testimony to an extraordinary durability of English imagery and, and culture in America, even though it's been mutated in this slightly su suspect way.